quickly fading from our status as the beacon of freedom for the world. COVID-19, the Democrats, and the globalist elite are doing everything in their power to take us down. But there's hope. As patriots who still believe in one nation under God, we can fight those trying to divide us by embracing the truth. For such a time as this, you're listening to the J.D. Rucker Political Report. Today's guest is one that I can honestly say I am very truly honored to have join us today. He's a man who I've been following for for many, many years and his history with from the Reagan administration all the way through to uh, the business world. I mean, he's been an academic. He's been a journalist and still I consider to be always a journalist. He's been a public servant and he has been, as I mentioned, a very successful businessman. He's currently the chairman of the Institute for Political Economy. We are very blessed, pleased, and honored to have the great Dr. Paul Craig Roberts join us today. Dr. Roberts, how are you doing today, sir? Uh, doing very well, J.D. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on. You know, you are one of the very few people that I could honestly consider to be a modern-day polymath. Your expertise ranges across the board. You know, you don't just, you, you, you know more about the economy than most economists. You know more about foreign policy than most fo- foreign policy experts. Um, you know about authoritarianism and you fight the good fight against such causes that try to keep us heading in the wrong direction. So we can go in many different directions. I would like to start with a topic that you have been covering very thoroughly on your sites and your writing and in everything that you're doing publicly, the, the authoritarianism, the totalitarianism that is rising right now between COVID-19 and the government's willingness to do whatever it takes, not just here in the United States, but across the world, they're really scaring the population into submission, I would say. What are your thoughts there, sir? Okay. Uh, Well, let me first say, J.D., I appreciate the compliments you gave me. Uh, uh, It may be the fact that I don't know uh, any more than anyone else, but it's just I'm more willing to speak to speak it. <laughs> um, it's very difficult uh, to have a career yeah, uh, anywhere in the West and certainly in the United States when you don't support the official narratives. Well, I've had so many careers, I don't need one. <laughs> I'm not, uh, this is not an admission that I lied when I was younger, (laughs) but um, it it is um, a statement that a lot of people simply can't afford to speak the truth. It's the end of their job, the end of their career. You see it everywhere. Um, I mean, look what's happened to the doctors who've blown the whistle on the COVID pandemic, on the mask, on the lockdowns. On the vaccine, uh, we're talking about uh, highly successful doctors. We're talking about uh, uh, highly distinguished uh, medical research scientists. Uh, When these kind of people can be closed down for speaking the truth, uh, you can see the power of the narrative. And, um, you know, I'll get to your question soon. (laughs) You you can see it also... uh, Anywhere you look, um, uh, take something uh, like 9-11. I don't believe there's a physicist anywhere in the country that can possibly believe the official explanation. (laughs) They know that that it's not true, that, that those buildings did not come down for the official reasons, but they can't say so. Why? Because there's hardly any phys- physics department anywhere that's not dependent on federal grants. So the minute you say something undercutting the important narrative of 9-11, there goes the grants, not just for you, but for the whole department. <laughs> so the whole university comes out against you. So you can see, I'm just giving a few examples that it's very difficult uh, for people to speak the truth because of the power of the narratives and how they are enforced. 
So you ask about the, uh, the close run we have had um, to becoming uh, a tyranny. Um, well, uh, the pandemic uh, was used to generate fear. They used uh, false reporting on the number of cases, which they used a false PCR test, no relation to me, to, to uh, uh, which uh, was run at such high cycles that it produced false positives. So almost all the reported cases were false. They elevated the uh, the deaths from COVID by counting literally every death as a COVID death. <laughs> Why did they do this? Because they wanted the fear factor, because the fear factor is what let them interfere with people's civil liberties, lockdowns, shut your business. You can't go to school. You can't go to church. You can't have a family Christmas. You, you see, I mean, these are extraordinary measures to impose on free people. And worst of all, the mandated coerced vaccinations. These are clear violations of the Nuremberg laws that were laid down following World War II. Um, a vaccination is uh, a medical procedure and under the Nuremberg laws, uh, it's illegal to coerce a medical procedure. It, has, it can only be done with informed consent. <clears throat> well, it, the leaders of every Western government know this, and yet they were all issuing mandates that you had to be vaccinated. In uh, Australia, they're putting people in concentration camps for refusing vaccination. In Austria, they, they, they uh, confine them to home arrest. In, um, in Germany, there are proposals from members of the government uh, uh, to give people no choice whatsoever. You just have to be vaccinated, period. <laughs> well, when you, when you see uh, allegedly democratic governments uh, behaving uh, like totalitarians, and you say, how did we reach that in free countries? And it was through the fear. So what explains this? Why did they want this control over people? Um, what, what's, what's behind it? Well, there's a Dutchman, his name is Kees van der Pil, and he just written a book, States of Emergency. It's a very important book. It's based on massive research. And he says that the global elite in recent years has been feeling shaky in their hold on power. That a number of reasons have produced this and one being the extraordinary uh, concentration of wealth in a few hands where almost all of the gains in income and wealth have gone to a dozen people. <laughs> and on the other hand, um, ordinary people are finding themselves uh, with falling living standards. And in, even in successful countries like the United States, the middle class is being wiped out. So this is just one reason, an economic welfare reason. Uh, we don't have time to, for me to tell you everything in the book. <clears throat> and so in order to solidify their control, the global elite, which is basically a few people. It's not, it's not very many. He says who they are, what the organizations are. Of course, Bill Gates is one of them. Uh, they decided that a medical pandemic was the way that you could drive people into the acceptance of control over their lives. And so uh, whether this was something they saw as an opportunity or whether they actually created the opportunity, 
it looks to me from the research available that it was a created opportunity that the virus itself was man-made, it came out of a lab, they've been working on it for years. The same with the vaccines, they've been working on the vaccine for years, this is not new. Um, so that is the explanation he gives, that these elites who work together, who are connected in many ways through their various organizations, the Bilderbergs, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral, Commission, the World Economic Forum, the Gates Foundation, the Wellcome Trust, they, they fund medical schools, they fund medical research. It's just, it's an amazing uh, interconnectedness that was able to orchestrate this pandemic. And that's the explanation that uh, Vanderbilt Hill gives of, um, of why uh, of why it happened to solidify their control and power by getting people accustomed uh, to following orders that normally they <laughs> wouldn't even consider. So the real question is wh whether this is over or not. And um, this remains to be seen. Uh, he thinks that the attempt uh, was too ambitious and has failed. And it does seem to have been blocked in the United States by the courts and by some governors like the Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, who didn't do lockdowns, didn't do mandates, <clears throat> in fact, prohibited them. Can you hear our Air Force? I, I can, I, I just heard them going over. I, uh, I'm unfortunately uh, located between two Air Force bases. <clears throat> and there's an entire Gulf of Mexico out there they could fly over, but they prefer to fly low over our homes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a similar scenario. I'm actually within 100 yards of a Marine base, and we have helicopters and uh, live fire drills that that happen every single day. That's you know, I, I wondered how we got in so cheap. Wow. Now I know, <laughs> but I don't mind it. I just got used to it. My wife, on the other hand, she would prefer more, more quiet than, uh, than having explosions going off at midnight, but, but we digress. Yes, I did hear that. And that's, that's a, uh, it's a wonderful sound actually. You know, it's when we stop hearing the sound that we realize we're in big trouble. So, <laughs> so you were saying that you, <clears throat> The globalist, the globalist elites either uh, planned or took advantage of this, this pandemic to, to reaffirm the their control. Say again? They created the pandemic with fear and disinformation. Fear and disinformation. Yeah. Well, yes. So, but then they may have actually participated in the creation of the, the virus itself. We know that the, the, the pandemic itself was something that, that they manufactured for the as you said, through the PCR tests, through the, oh my gosh, this guy, this guy fell off, uh, you know, his parachute didn't open up as he jumped out of the plane, but he tested positive for coronavirus. So it was obviously COVID that killed him, not the 23,000 right. foot jump. Exactly. We know, we know that, that this part, the fear was established and it's even possible that they were involved in the creation of the virus itself. So my question for you is, you know, we've got, you mentioned so many, the, the Trilateral Commission, uh, Council on Foreign Relations, the World Economic Forum, Welcome, uh, Welcome, I hate that name, but, uh, you know, that's <laughs> double L. It's just like, oh, wow, you guys are so crazy. You know, Bill Gates, Klaus Schwab, we've got all these various people involved. And then on the other hand, we've got the, I guess you could say the, the normal group that we get to see here on a regular basis here in America, um, government, you know, the Joe Bidens, the Anthony Fauci's, the media people, the corporate media that controls the narrative. Of course, you've got big tech. So my question is this. You've got the, the normal power bases that everybody knows about. You've got the, the abnormal, the, the abnormal power bases, the globalists, that more people are starting to learn about, thanks to people such as you. Who's controlling who, or are they all just in it together? <laughs> well, <clears throat> uh, the politicians are controlled by money. That the positions of, of, of politicians everywhere in the West uh, is determined by whoever funds their campaigns. 
<clears throat> that's who holds them accountable and that's who they serve. And the notion that, that they serve the public is, <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, they serve whoever keeps them in office. So <clears throat> the narratives that the, that the politicians support are the narratives of their campaign contributors, the large ones. And of course, uh, they're basically the same people. <laughs> so both parties are, are dependent on the same money. And <clears throat> so the governments uh, everywhere in the West and especially in the United States, uh, they're just puppets of the powerful interests. And it's not too many of the individuals uh, and uh, the individuals are so wealthy. We're talking about, you know, 100, 200 <laughs> billion dollars or more that they can create um, organizations and think tanks and research centers and entire departments and universities that just support their narrative <laughs> because they've got the money for that. It turns out that if you just take the Bill Gates Foundation, which is a very small part of his wealth, but the health grants that the Bill Gates Foundation gives is many times larger than the, than the entire budget of the World Health Organization. <laughs> and if you look at the enormous uh, budget that Fauci has at the NIH, uh, he can he can he gives grants that control over half of medical research. Just this one man. <laughs> well, what are you going to research? You're going to research whatever he wants you to, and you're going to find what he wants you to find. Well, you see, you can say this across such a wide range of activities. Um, you know, just like the physicists can't say anything about 9-11, except, oh, yes, it's true what the government says. <laughs> Wherever you look, research, wh where does the funding come from? Uh, a long time ago, it was public money. And now it's, it's uh, you know, like from the states. The states supported the universities. They had a research, but now it's, it's federal money, usually defense industries. <laughs> and it's corporate money. So Big Pharma essentially dominates medicine because of its research grants to medical researchers and uh, because of its uh, you know, grants to medical schools. And so, you know, the, uh, the long time editor of the New England Journal of Medicine which is uh, one of the most distinguished uh, medical journals, um, said that so many of the articles we publish, the co-author is the pharmaceutical industry <laughs> because of its grants to the authors. And he said that it's so out of control that you can't believe very many of the clinical studies that we publish in the journal. So they've even converted medical journals into uh, PR agencies for their products. So you can see the difficulty of truth. Where does, how, how does truth get in? It's, it's very difficult. And you see also that there are fewer and fewer doctors in private practice. They work for hospitals, they work for healthcare organizations. And this, this has been going on for some time and it was accelerated by Obamacare. So once a doctor is no longer in his own practice, he's an employee. So all of a sudden, he's governed by the protocols of his employer. 
he has to follow them even if they go against sound medical practice or he can or he can resign or get fired so this power over doctors is why the hospitals have refused treatment to dying patients with ivermectin with hcq and you may have noticed that just the other day uh, the biden regime um, uh, pulled uh, monoclonal antibodies from being used as treatment for COVID patients. Well, in Florida, the governor had set up a large number of clinics and the clinics were curing the people who were sick with COVID by using the monoclonal antibodies. And all of a sudden, poop, it's illegal to use them. <laughs> well, if you block all the cures, you make all the cures illegal and unobtainable, there's nothing left but the vaccine. So it helps them hype the vaccine, you know. Uh, once we were fully protected with uh, being double vaxxed, and then we weren't, and then we had to have a booster. <clears throat> and now you're fully protected if you have a booster, and now you're not. You have to have a fourth one and a fifth one. And it goes on forever. So you can see in this conspiracy against us, the pharmaceutical company is profit driven. They're, they're getting massive profits out of this. So that would that's another reason why you can see an entire industry going along with the um, elites program because whew, we're, we're, we're getting huge sums of money out of this. I mean, this, this vaccine has created a, a number of new billionaires. <laughs> so that just goes to show how there's so many powerful interests uh, benefiting from this and how the people who normally could blow a whistle can't because the doctors work for hospitals, they're fired. The same happens to nurses. If you, if you say anything, poof, you're gone. You know, a, a whole bunch of nurses uh, from all over the country have complained that the deaths and injuries from the vaccine are not reported to VAERS. That's the reporting system that you're supposed to report adverse vaccine reactions to, that the hospital doesn't report them then, that, and that it, it's not even obeying the law to report the adverse reactions. So if you have that kind of control over medicine, uh, people can't even find out what's happening. And, and the official position is, well, the vaccine's perfectly safe. <laughs> And the nurse says, well, um, I just heard one of them a while ago. She says, oh, well, um, before vaccination, we hardly ever saw uh, a case of a child having heart trouble. <laughs> she says, once the vaccination rolled in, um, the number of children with uh, heart troubles, heart attacks has exploded. She says, it's unbelievable, the number that you see more now in six months than she'd seen in a lifetime. <laughs> and, and so she said this, and she says, how come these aren't reported to bears? And they said, you're fired. <laughs> so <clears throat> the public can't even find out, J.D., and the media isn't going to tell them because the media is in the same boat. It's, it depends on advertising revenues. And, and uh, the pharmaceutical companies are huge advertisers. For <laughs> well, they're the biggest advertisers, yeah. period. I mean, there's yeah. nobody bigger. Nope. <clears throat> it used to be okay. the car companies, and then for a while it became uh, the, uh, the beer companies and soda companies were, were in there, the food companies, but now pharmaceutical has become the biggest advertiser for all of this, especially, oddly enough, news programs and news shows. You had mentioned earlier 
about how um, you know it doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, you they're they're all beholden in many ways. I don't think people realize this, but do you know off the top of your head which United States senator has received the most money from Big Pharma in his career? You know, I think I read that in Robert Kennedy's book, but I can't remember who it was. It is Mitch McConnell, the Republican uh, yeah. Senate minority leader, yeah, the guy who's the supposed Republican to be fighting leader. for our freedoms. Right. Yeah. And yet he's there. You know, it's we have to as a nation and as individuals, we have to start looking at people as who they are, not what's what number letters in front of their name. You know, I generally vote Republican. but That doesn't mean that I'm going to vote for every Republican because <laughs> there are many Republicans out there that absolutely positively do not deserve our votes. And I'm not going to continue to push for people that are going to be pushing for endless wars that are going to be pushing for vaccine mandates that aren't pushing back against the oppression of the American people and the destruction of our own freedoms. You had, you know, we've talked about the money aspect of it. I get it. You know, Pfizer, Moderna, J&J, all of the the, the companies. And, and it's not just the vaccines now. Now they're also pushing for for the Merck drugs, the Pfizer drugs, the, the COVID pills that are coming out, which is one of the reasons that they're trying to get rid of, continuing to try to get rid of uh, ivermectin and monoclonal antibodies, hydroxychloroquine, and the various nutraceuticals that are actually recommended even by, by uh, the uh, <laughs> Surgeon General in Florida, who is going against the, the U.S. Surgeon General. You know, you've got... You've got uh, DeSantis, the Surgeon General, saying, "Yeah, you know, take quercetin, take zinc, take vitamin C, take uh, take all of these nutraceuticals that will help you to boost your immune system, whether for COVID or not." But I have this my question here, and this is the part that really, really, um, I guess it concerns me because if it's just money, I get it. Okay, the money part it does make them money. The people that are that are controlling. Big Pharma, I mean, I'm sorry, Big Pharma is the one that, but the people that are controlling government officials and academia and um, the hospital systems, the medical systems and uh, mainstream media and uh, big tech and, and everybody, okay? This is pharma, the pharmaceutical companies and they have the money to be able to do this. But my question is this, they could be pushing for other things instead of the, the jabs. Do you think that there is anything, I guess, even more conspiratorial than just the profit margin? Is there a greater agenda being pushed here because, through the vaccines? Um, uh, yes, and um, Keyes Van de Pyle, he does, uh, he does discuss this and, and show that it's been uh, a long time in the making that they want to use uh, vaccination with things that aren't really vaccines. Uh, to basically take over the control of your mind and uh, uh, to be able to control you like you were, uh, you know, like a zombie or something. <laughs> it's um, a very complicated um, science, but you can follow the explanation. He says it's been going on for decades. Uh, the U.S. government's involved, the CIA's involved, the military, DARPA's involved, not just the uh, vaccine. I'm sorry about this. I should have turned the phone off. It's okay. Um, I, I, you reminded me I'm going to go turn mine off right now. <laughs> All right. Darn it. Where did I put it? I'm going to turn. Uh, it's a house phone. Can we stop? Well, no, it? we can. You know what? I'm going to. This is actually timing wise. Uh, we will be right back. With, with Dr. Dr. Uh, Paul Craig Roberts. After the break, we'll, I'm going to start asking him some, some crazier questions because he's got some amazing answers and we need this information. So we will be right back. My fellow Americans, how did you feel watching footage on the news of domestic terrorists looting our stores and burning our cities down? Uh, You were probably disgusted and angry as much as I was. It's disturbing what's going on. Well, you'd be shocked to know that your shopping habits are supporting these extremists. Companies like Amazon, Nike, Disney, FedEx, it's an endless list. And they've been supporting these radical groups. 
let's stop supporting companies that fund these extremist groups. We can all do our part. Visit shoptotheright.com and you'll find businesses in a nationwide database and companies that are aligned with our American values. Visit shoptotheright.com and let's all make a difference. Because of COVID-19, many Americans worry about their health four times a day. That's 112 times per month. But by simply keeping our immune system strong, we can stay healthy and put our worries at ease. One little known way to do this is by taking AC11, a patented supplement from a plant in the Amazon rainforest. Studied for over 20 years and backed by over 40 scientific peer-reviewed studies, taking AC11 has been proven to extend the life of immune cells called leukocytes, allowing you to boost immunity naturally. Go to HealthyCell.com and use code OUTLOUD for 20% off your first order of AC11. That's HealthyCell.com, H-E-A-L-T-H-Y-C-E-L-L, -E and use code OUTLOUD for 20% off. I'm excited to talk about a new product from HealthyCell, AC11. This is a patented bioactive extract of Uncaria tomentosa from the Amazon rainforest. It supports cell DNA repair and health span. It's a dietary supplement. I'm excited to try it. Many are interested in longevity and attenuation of senescence. We know that telomere length and other uh, biologic measures are related to senescence in uh, 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 clinical and uh, preclinical studies, particularly of animal models. And I can tell you as a doctor, dietary supplements do hold the promise of attenuating repair and damage in our body due to stress, physical wear and tear, sunlight, etc. And there's a tremendous opportunity for supplements to help us in this area. And so Healthy Cell has brought a product to market for you to try as part of your health portfolio. So please go to HealthyCell.com and in the promotional code, list out loud for 20% off your first purchase of products from Healthy Cell. Let's get real. Let's get loud on America Out Loud Talk Radio. Our invincible American spirit drives the most audacious experiment in the history of self-government. America Out Loud celebrates the American spirit every minute of every day. AmericaOutloud.com Liberty and justice for all. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. Dr. Roberts, before the break, we were we were talking about the vaccines, talking about the nefarious plans that, that could be involved with them. You know, I've always wanted to get you on the air and talk to you about the economy, talk to you about foreign affairs. This is very intriguing about the, uh, the vaccines, though. So if you don't mind, I'd like for you to continue that. And we might be able to get to neoconservatism. We might be able to get to, to globalism and and uh, the supply chain and the economic collapse that we're in the midst of. But right now, man, I am so fascinated by what you're telling us about the vaccines. Keep going. You were saying that, uh, that there's some some strange potential things that are happening with this that actually have to do with with controlling of humans. Yeah, it, they <clears throat> because of <clears throat> nanotechnology, they can introduce into you through something they call a vaccine ways of um, communicating with your own body. <laughs> and um, this is according to the author of the book that I showed you uh, is what they're working on. And they, so they're very ambitious in their intent uh, to completely wipe out human uh, uh, autonomy, 
There won't be any more autonomous people. And they don't want them because they get in their way. <laughs> autonomous people, uh, they make up their own minds. They decide they don't like this. They, they act, they revolt. And, uh, so there is, um, and he, uh, Vanderpil walks you through the history of these efforts. And it's frightening. And you, 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 there's so many people who are in the least bit bothered by the fact they're going to destroy human all, autonomy. <laughs> they're looking forward to it. They, in other words, the, the, the level of evil is unbelievable. It's just, it's off the charts. And, and that these are people who are doing very well for themselves. <laughs> So that's one side of the another side of it is that it, it turns out, according to uh, the most famous of the medical scientists, that the vaccine that they're giving for COVID, the mRNA vaccines, they actually turn your own immune system into a weapon against your body. They, they cause your own immune system to attack your, your brain, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your neurological system. And this explains the injuries and deaths from the vaccine, you know, if they try to cover up. But they're, they're huge numbers, even in the VAERS system, which uh, everyone admits uh, only collects the 1% to 10% of the actual uh, health injuries and deaths. Uh, but just the small number that are reported uh, are huge. In fact, uh, for a number of age groups, uh, more people have died from the vaccine than from COVID. So the question is, is this some form of population control? Um, it, there's also evidence that the vaccine uh, it, it trains the virus <laughs> uh, to have variants, to mutate. Now, from what I understand from talking to these medical researchers, uh, normally uh, over time, a virus, a dangerous virus, in order to survive itself, becomes less lethal in order to preserve its host. Apparently, this is not what happens if you vaccinate in the face of a pandemic. If you vaccinate in, in the face of a pandemic, which is they, they've created with the virus, with a vaccine, <laughs> you can produce more deadly variants. So the real unanswered question and unasked by anybody in the media is since it is known and they have never before vaccinated in the face of a, of a pandemic, why are they doing it? They know you're not supposed to, <laughs> and yet they're doing it. So then Obviously, this raises questions. Well, why are they going against uh, established behavior? They don't give any explanation. No one has said, well, we were wrong about that and blah, blah. And so it, it does look like they are trying to kill people. I mean, it's kind of hard to avoid <laughs> the conclusion. You see, they're not just trying to kill people by withholding treatment. Uh, they seem to be trying to kill people by vaccinating in the face of a pandemic. And so, you know, you have to wonder because the same group that orchestrated the pandemic is the group that is so concerned about population reduction. 
so to save the world from global warming and so on and so on. It's the same bunch. And so there could easily be here uh, some population reduction scheme. Now, some of the dissident scientists who have spoken out, they say that once you're vaccinated with the mRNA vaccine, that your immune system is your enemy from, for the rest of your life. And that sooner or later, you're going to be killed by your own immune system. Now, is this right? I have, how would I know? <laughs> But if you look at the quality and the achievement of the scientists saying that, you have to say, well, you know, th this is the last person to be a kook. <laughs> these, are, these are the people who have all kinds of achievements and were at the top of everything until they descended from the narrative. Right. Absolutely. So, and, and you see confirmation of their position coming in everywhere. For example, today I read a report uh, from an undertaker. And he says, you know, when we prepare people for burial, we, we draw the blood out of their body and said, lo and behold, when I look at that, it's, it's full of all kinds of clotted mess that we've never seen before. Hmm. And nobody with this kind of clotted mess could possibly survive. It's going to kill them that. sooner or later. Well, this is what undertakers are saying. Just the changes they're noticing in the bodies of vaccinated people who are dead as compared to the bodies they've been preparing for burial for decades. <laughs> that this is a new appearance, that the blood is all clotted and there are stringy particles in it. And now are they making this up? Oh, well, I suppose it could be, but there's been more than one such report. And, and then you have to say, well, why make it up? Uh, what purpose is he serving for making it up? He can't make any money out of it. He can't, he's certainly going to get uh, a lot of uh, unfavorable attention from authorities. I mean, they may close this business now. I mean, what? So the people who suffer from telling the truth, you can't find any reason they're gaining from saying those things. So it makes you think they are telling the truth. So there's a lot more going on, JD, and it's difficult to get to the bottom of any of it because the media suppresses it. And the medical, the medical establishment suppresses it because they really don't have any choice because they're, uh, they're under, you know, they're not in, they're, they're not, uh, in private practice. <laughs> They're employees. They got to follow the protocols, the rules, the narrative. If they don't, they get called out. Look what's happened to Dr. Peter McCullough. He's one of the most famous physicians in the entire world. You know, he heads up the big hospital in Texas. He's the editor of three medical journals. He has like hundreds and hundreds of research articles published. He's and all of a sudden, he's a person non grata because he said he dissented from the narrative. He said, no, look, we can treat this stuff. Here's how you treat it. He put out the protocol showing how to treat it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's uh, you're a bad guy. You're, you're messing up our vaccine sales. You're messing up our fear campaign. In other words, as there are three very effective, safe, and inexpensive treatments, there's no reason to be scared. There's no reason to have a vaccine. So this is why they have driven the treatments off the table. You can't use them. Well, why would you prevent a treatment from being used? Particularly as hospitals do, JD, you've got a dying COVID patient. Patients dying, 
He's on ventilators. You can't save him. The spouse, wife or husband, children, they come in with the family doctor and say, we want to try ivermectin. No, no, you can't do that. But ivermectin will kill him. Well, he's already died. <laughs> we don't think it will. We think it'll save him. Look at all these people that it's been that have that it's saved. Look at Peter McCullough's protocol. So they in you have spouses of dying patients going to court, trying to get a court order to force the hospital to let their dying spouse be treated. Well, how do you, why? What is the purpose of this? It's not protecting the patient, it's killing the patient. And in fact, we know, we now know that almost everyone who has died from COVID was someone with comorbidities. They already had a dangerous disease and they were denied treatment for COVID. You see, there's been no, no treatment outside of a hospital. If you have COVID, they tell you, go home. Uh, if you don't get better and you get worse, come to the hospital. And what do they do in the hospital? They put you on a ventilator. Well, that does, and that kills you <laughs> in most cases. Or they give you a remdesivir, which attacks your kidneys and doesn't do anything for COVID. And so if you go to the hospital, you don't get any effective treatment. And yet the hospital prevents even the wife or the husband or the son or the daughter or the guy's doctor from treating him with the things we know cure it. So well, let me ask you, you, know, you have to say, what is the explanation? It, it, it's nonsensical. I mean, why? It makes no sense. And this is the way it behaves. Here's, here's my question then. So, <clears throat> you know, I have been, I, I'm generally, I believe, a very understanding and forgiving person. But over the last few months, I've become less understanding and less forgiving of those who know the truth, who know what's happening, and who are refusing to act. And in many ways, they're actually acting against reality. In other words, we're talking about specifically the doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and there's many, you can look in multiple industries, but the doctors who are there who know exactly what's happening, who know that remdesivir is not effective, who know that, you know, basically once, once they're on a ventilator, it's a death sentence, who, who know that ivermectin probably makes a whole lot of sense. And yet, as you said, you know, they are being either uh, bribed, bullied, or blackmailed into doing what, what the hospital system, what big pharma and what the, uh, the globalist cabal want them to do, which is to absolutely under no circumstances are they allowed to give ivermectin? Because if they give them ivermectin, it's probably going to work. And they don't want that narrative to get out there. Hey, ivermectin works. Well, if it's going to work, then we got to make sure they can't use that. If monoclonal antibodies are going to work, well, we got to make sure they can't use that. We've covered that. But my question is this. I personally, I'm not in that situation, but I guarantee you with 100% certainty that if I were a doctor today and I was told by my hospital, my medical organization, my whoever, that I have to go against the, the Hippocratic Oath and I have to do harm to people. I would no longer be able to do it. You'd mentioned Dr. Peter McCullough. I'm very blessed and honored that my show, which runs on America Out Loud Talk Radio from uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, Dr. Peter McCullough's show ha covers me on the weekends. He's got my time slot on Saturday and Sunday, and he talks exactly like the stuff that you're talking about. So here's my question for you, though. <laughs> If we, we understand the narrative control, we understand the deep population agenda that may or may not be in place, whether it seems to be for sure. I mean, yeah. I'm, I think it's there. I don't want to say with a certainty that that's absolutely it, because, you know, I've also heard alternatives very similar to what you said earlier, alternative uh, opinions that it's a, no, it's not about depopulation. They don't want to kill people. They just want to be able to control their minds and turn us into, into basically robots that they can serve their needs. You know? And then I've also heard, as you also mentioned, it's funny that you're alluding to everything that I know. 
you I've heard that as as you mentioned that this is there they couldn't convince us that global warming was real and killing us so they're just going to kill us so that that way they can preserve the planet get us down to 500 million population or whatever it is then I look to the Bible and I see you know book of Revelation saying this all, all sorts of stuff as well everything seems to be pointing in the same basic direction they might be coming from different angles okay but whatever conspiratorial hats you put on they're all pointing directly in the direction that our society is currently heading. So my question for you, Dr. Dr. Roberts, is this. What can we do to stop it? What can we, I'm not talking about, you know, what can you know, anybody else do? I'm saying, what can we do? What can my audience do? What can you do? What can I do? What is our part? How can we make this not happen? Yeah, that's the question. Um, I think what we have seen um, in Europe, particularly Germany, um, in Australia, uh, massive protests, massive, huge numbers of people um, who were not taken in by the fear and even if they were, were not willing to give up their freedom and civil liberties. So this, it's the, these protests that uh, Vanderpil thinks defeated the first run at putting us into a tyrannical situation. So joining the protests. <laughs> um, another thing is to pay attention. So many Americans don't pay attention. Uh, they're, they're too lazy to be informed. But you got to know what's going on. And so you need to read Robert Kennedy's book, who exposes so much of it. You need to read uh, Vanderpil's book, States of Emergency, which tells you precisely what's going on. And even if you don't believe it, at least you've got another frame of reference you can fall back on when truth finally catches up with you. So you can be informed. Now, <clears throat> what some people would say is, there has to be a revolution, there has to be a violent revolution, and these people who are trying to kill us have to be killed. You can easily see that people would come to the conclusion, some people, that this is a matter of self-defense. They, they are killing us, they're killing kids, our wives, our daughters, our husbands, our brothers. They don't care. They're withholding treatment, they're giving us dangerous and untested vaccines. Um, they, they're carrying on research activities that don't have any good intentions for humanity. <laughs> um, they're, and, and they are the richest and most powerful influential people on earth, but there's only a handful of them. And there are billions of us. Why do we tolerate it? Why do we put it? Why don't we just pull them out in the streets and kill them and be done with it? So there are people already thinking this way. If it spreads, uh, then uh, that'll be one. <laughs> that'll be the solution. Um, so you know, I I don't know. I think. Uh, Certainly, the strong street protest had an effect. In the United States, the separation of powers, I think, saved us. And there were enough judges willing to enforce the separation of powers. Now, would there have been enough judges if, for example, uh, the virus was far more deadly and, you know, 30, 40% of city populations were dying? 
And would they then make rulings that the law required? Maybe not. Um, I don't think Kavanaugh would have. I don't think the John. Ro- I, I think that both John Roberts and Kavanaugh would have uh, sided with the progressives on the court in that scenario. Yeah. I think the only thing that you know, the questions they were asking seemed to indicate they were very much against um, the mandates only because they didn't think it was necessary. If a more deadly virus comes along, I could see both of them and possibly even Amy Comey Barrett coming out and saying, yeah, we, we, we need to bend the Constitution a little bit for the sake of the public well-being or whatever. I'm sorry. Keep that's, going. That's what I fear, too. And so what have the elites learned that this virus wasn't deadly enough? So what about the next one? Um, I think um, that uh, they're not they're not going to accept the kind of behavior from us in the future that they have in the past. So this could shake American power in a way that Washington doesn't expect. So it'll be nice to watch that. It'll be nice to get back on the economy. So call me again sometime. I think we ought to wind this down for the sake of listeners because we're going on too long. Oh, they're fine. But I agree. Lydia, I've got your email. I got your phone number. Let's talk here in the very near future. Let's get you on again. Lord willing, we will be back very soon with another episode. But in the meantime, y'all stay strong, stay safe, and God bless.